Hello, I'm Gavin Clark. I'm with the National Museum of Computing at Birchley Park. Uh, the museum houses a fantastic range of computers, some 50,000 working systems, large and small, that played a fundamental role in British history, wartime, peacetime and education. Uh, the museum is home to a large number of experts and we've been taking your questions uh, over the internet via Twitter and other social media and putting them to our experts at the museum. One question we had on Twitter was from John Thrower. How many break code breaking machines were built? Obviously, Bletchley Park is famous for the work of its code breaking during the Second World War. Uh, it industrialized code breaking during the Second World War with some very famous machines, Colossus and, and Bomb. But Peter Hoth, how many, can you answer that question and maybe clarify some of the, some of the myths and misunderstandings around, around this? Yeah, thanks Gavin. Um... I think the first thing to cover is that there was no one machine that took the, the process of code breaking from end to end. It is a common misconception that these machines took cipher text in at one end and magically produced plain text at the outer end. And uh, wouldn't that be nice, the universal machine? Um, the reality is more like a jigsaw puzzle um, where there were a large number of machines that were created. Um, all had their own role to play in, in the uh, end to end, the overall end to end process of code breaking. Um, for example, around the Colossus story, uh, Colossus operated in Max Newman's outfit on the park, the so-called Newmanry. Um, and in May 1945, and this is pretty much at the end of hostilities, certainly in Europe, um, I can tell you that there were 10 Colossus machines, four of which were in F block and uh, six were in uh, H block. And H block is where is where TNMOC is now housed and where you can see our working rebuild of a Colossus in um, in its historically correct position of uh, where number nine stood. Um, in the Newmanry, there are also three Robinson machines. That's the truncated name of Heath Robinson, um, which uh, first was used to establish the uh, the principle of being able to mechanise Bill Tut's uh, breakthrough on uh, the, on the Lorentz cipher. There were three Tunney machines, and Tunney was the, um, the machine that was designed and produced at Dollis Hill. And if you like, it's our version of a Lorentz machine. It's our tamed down version. It's a lot easier to program. And it was used to uh, play back messages once all the settings were established. Um, it did have some other uses. There were 20 ancillary electrical machines, um, uh, slightly smaller than uh, things like Colossus and, um, and Robinson. They went under various names like Mrs. Miles, Garbo and Dragon, and they had their own um, particular functions within that overall jigsaw puzzle. Um, and just to flesh things out to finish off, there were something like 26 cryptographers in the numeracy, 28 engineers to look after the equipment, and 273 wrens who did all the hard work. Mm. Um, so that just, uh, so this was, um, it was a highly manpower intensive uh, uh, outfit, even in spite of having some pretty sophisticated machinery for the time available to them. So we're saying, as far as we know, at least 47 machines all performing different functions. And but as we think, as we as understand, not we think about Bletchley Park, but we think there were systems in other places as well. Yeah, I get 36 machines, actually. But yeah, it's <laughs> it's I'm not asking. an enormous number of machines in terms of the, the Colossus story. Um, because the Enigma story, there were 211 bomb machines, we, we know. Mm -hmm. um, only a few on Bletchley Park, because I believe they were used for training purposes. The majority of them will be in the other outstations for government, co government code and cipher school, places like RAF North Holt and RAF East Coast. Mm -hmm. And why, I suppose, why is there so much uh, uncertainty? Because, um, and I guess maybe we can tackle just briefly, what happened to them all after the war? Because we don't know for sure how many there were. Surely if they, they were built, we should surely know, have an accurate record of it, shouldn't we? Well, the orders were from, uh, certainly in the Colossus story, the orders coming from Churchill were that the machine shall be uh, dismantled. There are some um, pretty kind of weird stories about these things being thrown down deser deserted mine shafts and that sort of thing. Um, the reality is that there's a lot of valuable equipment that could be reused in, in particularly in Col Colossus and Robinson. Um, so they were dismantled as far as they could and the equipment that could be reused was put back into stores. Um, but they were, um, all the Colossus were dismantled either fully or partially to, to survive um, and found their way to what we now know as GCHQ. Um, they wound up at one of the GCHQ sites in Cheltenham, Oakley, which I believe is now a Sainsbury's supermarket. So that's progress for you. 
Um, <clears throat> The, um, the the rest of the parts were scattered to the four winds in, in terms of colossus, and a similar fate would have befallen um, the uh, bomb machine. So um, this is a it's a, it's a it's a challenge really for the um, for the rebuild teams to actually um, put this stuff back together. When certainly in terms of colossus, um, Flowers is known to have um, taken his diagrams, all of his drawings, and burned them ceremonially in a bonfire uh, somewhere adjacent to Dulles Hill laboratory so um it's an uphill struggle when you're trying to uh to, to rebuild this sort of stuff 